Hi there. So today I'm going to talk about Helmet and Helmet is going to help you add some security to your Sapper app. Super easy, just some basic security. You should probably add it to every node app that you have. And then I'm going to go into the details a bit, which you can stay for or not. Also, I have a Patreon. So if you want to help me out, that'd be great. Or just like and subscribe. Anything helps. Okay. So first thing you need to do is npm install Helmet. Pretty basic. Um, oh, and just so you know what I'm doing, I have two servers here. One's on 3000, one's running on 3001 with helmet, no helmet. So we don't have helmet on here yet, but we're gonna add it right now. So here I am in the terminal terminal in VS Code. To get this open, you just control tilde, top left, control tilde there. Um, so npm install helmet. And sorry that my typing is so loud. Um, when I'm like recording, it doesn't sound that loud, but then um, all of a sudden it's in the recording, it's crazy loud. So I'll try to figure out some way to do that. Okay, anyway, so import helmet from helmet. So you can do it like this. This is like the newer syntax. Um, on their site, they have it like that. I think that'll work as well. And then right here, you just do helmet like that. So that includes it. So you import it, and then you use it in your Poker script. Um, and save that. Cool, so now we have helmet on the with helmet. I'm also going to add express because that's what most people use and it helps me illustrate one of the points from helmet. So you're not going to notice any change really here. Um, it's all going to be the same. <clears throat> it's mostly going to change some of the header information in here. Uh, like it's going to add all these guys here. Um, so I'm going to go through one by one and show you what those are. Um, but you can stop the video now if all you wanted to do is add helmet like that. That'll give you the seven out of 13 defaults down here. So, you know, if you're a security expert, you can add more or take away or do whatever. Okay, so let me just put express into here. Cool. So now we have a helmet express app, and this is a no helmet express app. Okay. Um, so first thing I'm going to show you or just talk about is DNS prefetch control. So basically, when you are about to click something, and I think it's this, I'm not really sure, but I just noticed that and I'm thinking maybe this is the prefetch. So when you're about to click something, it'll go and prefetch the, some browsers will go and prefetch the IP address for that link. Um, and by having this enabled, it just, it won't do that because it seems so, hmm, I wonder if they have it enabled on this website. I don't know, but you can look into it more. Um, I'm not sure why it's like a big issue really, but there's some privacy because it makes it look like the user is going to that link when they're not really because it's going to fetch the IP address for whatever link they're about to click on. It's kind of like Sapper prefetch. It goes and gets the information before you've actually clicked on it, just to speed things up. So this turns it off. Uh, you can read more about it if you want. Okay, the next thing is frame guard to prevent click jacking. So I have this little, um, I have x.html that I wrote. It's a beautiful website. And here you'll notice localhost refuse refuse to connect. So let me open up x.html. Um, all it's trying to do is put an iframe and use localhost 3001 or uh, localhost 3000. And 3000 has helmet, so it's not able to do that. But you'll notice that if we do 3001 and I refresh, then I am able to put in an iframe of the no helmet website because they don't have helmet. And this basically so that's what it does. It's not it lets it doesn't let anyone use an iframe with your website in it, but the like malicious part of it is if someone would maybe uh, make this opaque or like somehow cover it up and get users to click on your website and do weird things on your website without um, without you wanting them to do that or without the user knowing that they're doing that. So that's what the click jacking um, or the frame guard will prevent is click jacking. Okay, hide powered by. So powered by, you'll see here in my no helmet website. And it seems like Polka doesn't do this. That's why I made sure to install Express, because it does do this. Um, so in network, let's see here. Will this do it? Manifest.json. Yeah, so serviceworker.js. So some of these files will have X powered by Express, OK? So if you're using Express, it probably has this header in it. And then hackers will know that you're using Express. And then they can use like certain um, hacks that they know work better on Express apps. So you don't want them to know that you're using Express. Um, it just gives them more information. So here, there is no X powered by anything because it has a helmet on. OK, so that is hide powered by HSTS. 
So strict transport security. Um, I will go back, I'll come back to this, but um, for example, here in my, this is from Heroku deploy video. It's naturally, like it's usually gonna be HTTPS when you come to this link, but this lets, if you don't have helmet, then users can go to your HTTP not secure address and still use it. So if they're trying to hack you, then they probably wanna do it on HTTP. Um, and so without helmet on, uh, they can do that. So I will try to deploy this. I'll put helmet on and deploy it later in the video so you can see how it prevents you from doing that. Uh, but it takes a while, so. Okay, so that is the other one, is it forces them to be on HTTPS. It doesn't let them be on HTTP. Next, IE no open. I don't really understand this one. You can read more about this, uh, but it sounds like old versions of Internet Explorer, sort of untrusted HTML for download it, for download. Um, I don't know. So... You can look into that more, but it sounds like, oh, for IE8 plus, yeah. Something weird on Internet Explorer, so it's just probably nice to have. Okay, no sniff. So what this does is some uh, browsers will sniff the mime type. So for example, it'll kind of, it'll try to figure out what kind of file someone uploads. So if someone uploads, so the example they use is someone open uh, uploads a JPG file but really it's like an HTML file. It just has like the extension JPG. Uh, then the then you might accept it as a JPG file, but then it's really like JavaScript or HTML or something bad. And we just, wa we just don't want um, people uploading weird code into our website. So um, yeah, it just prevents the browser from trying to figure out like what kind of file it is. So if it has a JPG, extension that has to be jpg we don't let the browser like look at it and be like oh actually it looks like javascript and i'm gonna execute it that's what i understand you know i don't know exactly i've never run into that but that's what no sniff is kind of so xss filter so this is kind of fairly popular type of hack um cross site scripting so basically um it, it tells me down it tells you down here that this doesn't prevent all XSS, but it's just like a kind of one small thing that it can do just easily. Um, but XSS is when someone somehow gets uh, JavaScript into your website, and then whenever someone loads it, it like runs that JavaScript, and they uh, can just run whatever they want in anyone's browser. So the biggest example I've heard of someone doing that is they like hacked a third party JavaScript thing. They injected some code that like mined, not Bitcoin, but some kind of uh, cryptocurrency. And then whoever went to that site was mining cryptocurrency for that person. So that's an example of excess of a cross site scripting. Okay, so that's all the defaults. That's what you get when you just uh, add in helmet, just uh, like that. So to, if you want to have some of these others, content security policy, all these others, then what you need to do is add it yourself. So let's say you don't want them to cache any of your uh, files. You want them always to have the newest files whenever they load your site. So you just need to app.use helmet.no cache. Okay, so here in my helmet site, come here, helmet.no cache. Oh, I need a comma. Helmet.no cache. So now I can't cache anything here in my helmet site. So um, i trying to think of a good example. Yeah, I don't have an example. I don't have an example for you now, but um, it shouldn't be caching anything now. Okay, so if you want to add any of these others, content security policy, <clears throat> what this does is it only, so this is also for X, like cross-site scripting. Um, you can specify, so this one's a bit more complex. You can't just add one line, directives. You basically tell it where you want your files to come from. So if you want to use the CDN for Bootstrap, then you could say only accept from myself and from Bootstrap. That way you don't like take JavaScript from some other random website and put it into your, um, into your website somehow. Okay, so that's content. Again, you can look at them more if you want to understand them better. I'm just kind of giving a brief. Okay, expect CT. I don't know what this is. Certificate transparency, probably something good to make it more secure, but I don't really know what that is, but you can look it up if you'd like. 
feature policy. So feature policy lets you say what kind of features you want the browser to use. So these are like extra features, um, like, yeah, using microphone, magno, or uh, what is that? Magnetometer, speaker, USB, all these other things that you can interact with in the hardware camera. So if you know that your website is never going to need the camera, then you want to specify, like, never use the camera. That way, a third party person can't like somehow hack your site and then use the camera and do bad things with it. So feature policy just lets you set what extra features in the hardware that you're going to be using and it prevents other people from then using those features <clears throat> or using the features that you haven't specified. Okay, no cache, that's just no cache. Uh, permitted cross domain policies. This just kind of prevents Adobe Flash. Uh, I don't know exactly, but from using your website or something. Refer policy, this one is when you click on, let's say someone clicks from your app to go to Google, then Google will see that they came from your app. So if you enable this, um, then they won't know that they came from your app. You can put same origin, so it'll set this header when it's like within your app. Uh, but if you go out, then people won't see that they came from your app. Okay, so that is just a quick interview. Um, I hope that didn't wasn't too boring or uh, I hope that made some sense. Again, these things are a lot more complicated and deep than I can explain in a, I don't know how long this video is, but 15 minute video. Uh, so if you're interested, you can come and read up on them more. Uh, oh, I was going to show you how to add helmet and then that it would uh, not let you go to not secure, but I'm not going to do that. It's going to take forever. But if you have helmet on and then I, if I push this again, then it wouldn't let me come to this. It takes a while for it to update, but I tried it on a different app and it works. So uh, that's all that there is to that. Okay, cool. So let me know if you have any questions and have a nice day. Bye.